Hello and thanks for joining me on this eViews presentation on Difference GMM and System GMM. This video shows how to estimate Difference GMM, choose between Difference GMM and System GMM, and interpret the results of the selected model. The features of the two estimators are as follows, large n and small t. The number of groups n must exceed the number of time periods. A large functional form, sorry, a linear functional form, autoregressive dependent variable, endogenous regressors, group specific fixed effects, which is the heterogeneity factor, heteroscedasticity, which is unequal error variance, and zero correlation within groups. So the difference GMM credited to Ariana and Bond 91 uses first differences of the variables to remove fixed effects and corrects indigeneity with the use of instrumental variables. The weaknesses, though, include the fact that differencing eliminates previous observations and erases time constant variables, as exemplified in this illustrative table right here where x1, as you can see, is time invariant. And so if you took the differences of these observations, you're going to wind up with zero. System GMM, which is credited to Ariana and Barber in 95, with me methodological improvements, if you will, in 98 by Blundell and Bond, corrects indigeneity by introducing additional instruments to dramatically improve the efficiency of the model. And what it does is to transform the instruments rather than the regressors by differencing the instruments to get rid of the fixed effects. And it chooses what's called orthogonal deviations instead of first differences by subtracting the average of future observations from the current value, contemporaneous value, if you like. And here's an example of how that works. So from these, uh, from this original series, if, if we were to uh, use difference GMM, obviously in the first time period, we're not going to have any observations, uh, any observations since there's nothing preceding it. But in the second time period, it's going to be 21 minus 10 to get us 11. Third one, 34 minus 21 to get us 13, and the beat goes on. Now with orthogonal deviations on the system uh, GMM. In the first time period, we're first of all going to calculate the average of the future observations, meaning from 21 down to 95. That average is 57.17, and so 57.17 minus 10 will get us 47.17, as you see in this definition. And in the second time period, again, we're going to first calculate the average of the future observations, meaning from 34 down to 95. And that comes out to 64.40. And so 64.40 minus 21 will fetch us 43.40. And so you work your way down the journey, Mary Lane. So you can already see that this manner of differencing is more robust when it comes to the use of unbalanced panels and missing observations. Indigeneity in both estimators is resolved with the use of instrumental variables, as noted earlier. But because these two estimators are designed for general use, they do not actually assume that good instruments are available outside of the data set. And so the assumption is that the only available instruments are going to be internal instruments, specifically lacks of the endogenous regressors. Now, though, to be sure, the, the estimators do allow the inclusion of external instruments. And for that matter, there are three main types of variables we encounter in this type of estimation. Exogenous variables are those that are uncorrelated with the error term. Predetermined variables are uncorrelated with the present error term, but correlated with the past error, an example of which is the lag-dependent variable, which is included as a regressor in the dynamic model. Endogenous variables are correlated with the error term. And so in differencing, in difference GMM, the original model is differenced, as you see here. And while differencing does in fact remove fixed effects, as you can see in the expansion of the error term right down here and the differencing of it, we're still left with, among other things, the lagged, deep, the lagged error term 
which naturally is correlated with the lag dependent variable again which is included as a regressor in the model and so even if the other regressors are strictly exogenous you find that there's still going to be an element of indigeneity left in the model noting that different GMM produces biased and inefficient estimates in particular when the model is persistent in that it follows um, a close random walk and instruments are weak in that they are weakly correlated with the underlying regressors and time period is short system GMM uses a two equation approach with additional moments conditions that is additional instruments to deal with those issues the additional instruments have been found to yield more efficient parameter estimates and so the question becomes how do we choose between difference GMM and system GMM the rule of thumb recommended by bond in 2001 is to first estimate this original model in this example I have a three variable model with um, two original regressors x1 and x2 and then we have the inclusion of the lag dependent variable as a regressor also in the model so we're going to first estimate this original model using pooled OLX and make a note of the coefficient of the lagged dependent variable and repeat with fixed effects model estimation using either the least squares dummy variable or within group approach and again make a note of the coefficient of the lag dependent variable and then finally estimate difference GMM and make a note of its coefficients what happens is that the estimated coefficient with OLS is the upper bound while that with fixed effect is considered the lower bound and if we find that the coefficient estimates with difference GMM is greater than that of fixed effect then what it means is that difference GMM is going to be the way to go and meaning that difference GMM is correctly instrumented however if it comes out to be less than the fixed effects coefficient estimate there then we roll with system GMM because what that means is that difference GMM in this case has a downward bias due to weak instrumentation so that's the rule of thumb so let's go ahead and demo that real quick right here on eViews so in this example I have 247 groups and six years of annual data and so this definitely fits the bill in that my number of groups far exceeds as you can see the number of observations of the number of time periods and so with generic notations for ease of understanding y is my dependent variable x1 is my first independent variable and x2 is the second one so what we're going to do is to first estimate pooled OLS in the order I mentioned so right click on any of these open as equation and right here let's include the lag dependent variable y minus one right there and we're done we're just going to have to click OK method is least squares because it's pooled OLS so OK and this is what we're looking for we make a note of this coefficients which is approximately 0.69 all right then X out of it and do do the same this time with fixed effects estimation so right here again before we go ahead include the lagged dependent variable like so and then go here to panel options and for cross-section switch this to fixed and that's all we need to do okay and that's our output right here and once again we're going to make uh, make a note of this so this point 44 is going to serve as the lower bound and we X out of it and finally we go ahead and then estimate difference GMM so right click open as equation and we're going to come to method and switch this to generalized method of moments dynamic panel data so click on it and now click on panel options let's go through the tabs 
panel options and for cross section down here choose difference GMM because that's what we're getting ready to estimate we can leave everything else as is including GMM weights then click on instruments and let's type in our internal instruments which is going to be x1 lag 1 and then x2 lag 2 oh sorry lag 1 all right so the first lags of the regressors and then click on options and for options we're going to check this always keep gls and instrumental variable gmm weights all right so that's it so go back to spec don't click ok go back to specification again and now let's go here to the lower left corner and click on dynamic panel wizard all right and uh, begin our journey to ensure that we're set to estimate different GMM. So here, the dependent variable is recognized as Y. Next, step two, the independent variables are recognized as X1 and X2 and the constant. And if you do have period dummy variables, you can check this, but we don't have in this example. So I'm going to uncheck it. Then next, for step three, differences is already selected, so we're good to roll with that. Next up, and right here, the um, instrument for the, f for the first lag of the independent variable specified as a regressor, that the instrument of it is what you see right here, which the system has already identified. So click next to step number five. And in step number five, our other internal instruments are selected, are identified. So next and final step, and we're going to stay with um, the um, default option right here. So we're done, really, and finish. So now, as you can see, our dynamic model is correctly specified, which now includes the lagged dependent variable as a regressor right there. And if you want to confirm the instruments, click here on the Instruments tab, and you're going to see all the, the three instruments. The instrument for the first lag of the dependent variable, the first regressor, and the second uh, re original regressor, that is. So we're good to go. Just click OK. And that's what we got going right here. And this is the highly coveted, <laughs> if I may say, coefficients of the lag dependent variable which we now have to compare to the upper bound from OLS and the lower bound from fixed effects and here is a summary on my PowerPoint go here right there so as you can see the coefficients from different GMM is greater than that from fixed effects and so we conclude that different GMM is correctly instrumented and with that, we're going to have to base our interpretation of the dynamic model specification on the results of difference GMM. However, before we give this a good wrap, let's go ahead and perform the Ariano um, bond test of zero correlation. So we're going to go right back here. And on this different GMM output, we're going to go to View, Residual Diagnostics, Ariano bond zero correlation test. And this is what we're looking for, for reasons explained in the last video. So we're looking for the p-value corresponding to AR2. And at the 5% level of significance, we cannot reject the null hypothesis of no sec second order zero correlation. And so we're quite happy with this. And now we summarize and conclude. For that, I head back to my PowerPoint. So here's a summary of the different GMM output where the J statistic of 7.73 has a p-value of 0.56, which as you can see is greater than the threshold of 0.25. And so we say that the null hypothesis of overriding restrictions is not rejected, which supports the validity of the dynamic panel model specification. Next up, we find that the coefficient of the lag dependent variable which captures persistence in the model has a value of 0.47. Remembering that this coefficient is between 0 and 1, we can say that this reflects moderate, a moderate degree of persistence.
in that there's a bit of history or memory, if you like, in the behavior or performance, if you like, of the dependent variable. Next up, we already have determined that there is no evidence of second order serial correlation. And finally, we note that the two original regressors, X1 and X2, are statistically significant. X1 at the 1% level and X2 at the 5% level. And both have positive coefficients, meaning that individually they do have a positive impact on the behavior of Y. And this concludes this presentation. What I'm going to do next up is to show an example of system generalized method of moments. And that's going to be the case where the coefficient of the lag dependent variable with different GMM estimation is less than that with fixed effects estimation. Hope you enjoyed it.